Hey, welcome back. As you know, I usually work with metal, but in this video we're gonna switch it up and do the most woodworky YouTube thing imaginable, which is to talk endlessly about dust collection and spend way more time over engineering ways to suck up tiny particles than actually getting any productive work done. So even though this is mostly a metal workshop, I do happen to own a table saw, which I use mostly for building shop infrastructure and the occasional furniture project. This saw is sold by a brand named Holzmann, but I'm sure there's many clones of this from other brands because this is one of those Chinese budget machines that are resold by a bunch of different companies. Before we jump in, I just want to share a few thoughts about this saw because I know people are going to ask about it anyway. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. The build quality is actually really good for what this costs. I think I paid around 900 bucks for this and for that you get a solid cast iron tabletop and pretty much everything else on this is made out of steel. So I'd say this is a big step up from those hobby uh, drop side saws that are basically an aluminum sheet on top of a plastic bucket. It's also a pretty decent size without taking up half my shop and comes with this handy crosscut slide. As usual with these types of machines it does have some weird design quirks out of the box like the power button being in an idiotically inconvenient position or the power cable coming out of the front of the saw, which is one of the most inexplicably bizarre design choices I've ever seen on a machine. But those are just minor annoyances, so of course I did a bunch of modifications to the saw to fix those issues. I also built a rolling base for the saw, which both allows me to easily move it around the shop and at the same time fixes the hobbit-sized work height the saw normally sits at. And as I'm sure you noticed, I also painted the red parts black, because I couldn't stand to look at another obnoxiously red machine in here. So now let's talk about everybody's favorite topic, dust. As a surprise to nobody, the dust collection on this thing sucks and not in a good way. But despite what you may assume, it's not the fault of my somewhat sketchy looking setup with the shop vac here, but more due to the design of the dust collection system or the lack thereof. The reason why I'm using this setup with the shop vac and the dust cyclone is that I really don't have space in here for one of those huge dust collection towers you see in most wood shops. And I also don't have any other woodworking machines like a jointer or a planer, so having a gigantic elaborate wood specific extraction system just doesn't make any sense for me. This system with the shop vac is completely integrated with the saw, so I can move the entire thing around the shop when I need more space to work, which is super convenient. The shop vac hooks up to a power outlet that I built into the saw, and that's wired into the three-phase power coming in, so it turns on and off automatically together with the saw. So I'm gonna stick with this solution, because I think the real problem isn't the amount of suction available, but rather applying it in a way where it actually has any chance of capturing the dust. Currently the saw is shooting dust absolutely everywhere. Besides the huge amount of dust being created on top due to the included dust hood being a useless piece of junk that I never use, the saw also shoots a lot of dust into its own base. And not only that, it also comes out of these slots in front, covering your legs and dust and chips when using it. So let's have a look inside there to see what's really going on. You can already see how much dust is building up inside the base and the main problem is this dust box that goes under the blade which is a pretty crude attempt at trying to capture whatever the blade is shooting down there because there's so many wide open areas with no coverage that a lot of dust will just go straight past this no matter how much suction you apply in the back there. I'm sticking my hand through the slot in front there and as you can see the trajectory from the blade goes straight into this with no obstructions so that's why so much dust is shooting out the front of the saw. The shape of the dust box does of course have its reasons and a lot of it is to provide the needed clearances for the blade to be able to move up and down and also tilt. So for example this diagonal gap in front here is necessary so that the whole assembly can tilt sideways for minor cuts. Which means there's always going to be a gap there no matter what and for the same reason you also can't have the side wall go all the way up to the top. After playing around with this for a while I realized it really is very tricky to design something that covers all the bases here because there's just so many things to consider and I think that's exactly why the dust collection is often terrible on cheaper saws. It's not that it would necessarily cost more in materials or production to make a good dust collection system, but it does take a lot of expensive design work and prototyping and since most people just look at the spec sheet of a cheap saw, companies can easily get away with treating the dust collection as an afterthought and giving you a half-assed solution. Since this problem is so complex, I did what any sane person would do and spent way too much time measuring and writing down everything I could think of and drew up a model of the mechanism in Fusion, which I can now use to illustrate all this a little bit better. I didn't model the entire saw, of course, because I'm not that crazy. This is more of a dummy model to figure out the relationships between parts when stuff moves around and tilts. So in terms of movement, this should be pretty close to the real thing which is hugely helpful to minimize the amount of guesswork I have to do to work out clearances. One of the biggest issues with the stock approach is that while there's always a huge open gap on the side, the gap gets even bigger the lower you set the blade height. 
and generally on a table saw you only want the blade to stick out far enough to make your cut so unless I'm trying to cut something really thick this gap on this side is gigantic. So the first thought might be to cover this area with a big sheet or something but of course it doesn't work because then the blade wouldn't be able to go up and down at all anymore. So I thought about some kind of telescopic cover that can extend up and down or covering the side with uh, some kind of fabric and all kinds of other solutions. But eventually it became clear I would have to get rid of the stock dust box altogether and come up with something new from scratch. And things started to click when I realized this would all be much easier if I could isolate the dust box to just move in one plane of motion instead of two. And that's where this part on top comes in. This plate represents pretty much the only possible mounting surface in this whole area that's independent from the mechanism that moves the motor assembly with the plate up and down. But it's part of the tilting mechanism, so I figured if I made a new dust box and attached it to that, its height could be stationary, meaning the gap on the side doesn't get bigger as the blade moves up and down. And after a lot of sketching and working out clearances, I came up with this thing. This is actually the third design iteration of this box, which is designed to be 3D printed, and instead of this whole thing moving up and down with the blade, it's stationary on the vertical axis, while the blade can actually move inside the box. But if you want to tilt the blade, that's still possible, thanks to the box being attached to the tilting part of the mechanism. Of course, the box also has a cover for the front, which is easily attached and removed via magnets. And here you can see just how much more coverage that provides, regardless of the blade height. There's also an important detail on the back here, which is this slot. This is something I messed up on the first design, because I didn't account for the riving knife. In the original dust box, the riving knife is inside the box, but that would have required me to make my box way bigger and... I wanted to keep it somewhat snug around the blade to hopefully improve airflow. But since the riving knife moves up and down with the blade, it wants to cut into the dust box in the back when it goes down, so the slot is there to provide clearance for that while keeping the open area as small as possible. There's also still the issue of that diagonal gap in front. This is something that's still present in this design because there's just no way around it if you want the box to be able to tilt without colliding with the table. But I figured out a pretty simple way to close this gap with a little extra part. This little bracket just attaches to the underside of the table via magnets and effectively closes the gap and acts as a chip deflector while having clearance built in so it can just sit there and not collide with any of the moving parts. Last but not least we of course need to capture the dust that goes in the box and for this one I put the dust part on the bottom and this was an important design aspect I wanted to include because due to the chips and dust mostly being shot downwards I think it makes a lot more sense to intercept them down here rather than applying suction from the back and around the corner like with the old dust box. I designed two more parts for the bottom, one is this elbow that changes the exit angle and then another adapter for the actual dust hose and the reason for those shapes is once again clearance because with the blade tilted to 45 degrees, this would otherwise collide with the side panel. Even though I have a very nice new printer, I ended up printing most of this stuff on my old one, simply because it has a bigger print bed, which was pretty much maxed out throughout this project. So here's some of the prints I made. This is the first iteration, which like I mentioned didn't work out, because I completely forgot to add the slot in the back. Here's the second one, and this already pretty much worked out for the most part. It had a few minor clearance issues, but this was mostly just stuff being off by a few millimeters here and there. The main problem with this was the floating part where the slot is. It was just too flimsy on this one, so this needs extra support. But it was still a good prototype that helped me to figure out everything I need to change to have the third version fit perfectly. One of those things was this little threaded rod that's sticking out here. This is welded on, so I can't just unscrew it, and it's one of the mounting points for the old dust box. I could have included another cutout in the design to stop this from colliding with the new one, but instead I figured it's easier and more clean to just cut this off, because even if I wanted to install the old box again at some point, I could easily just do that by using a coupling nut. And so now this is able to slide behind the new dust box. Another minor issue was the riving knife being off-center. Normally this is installed with a spacer between the frame and the dust box, so by having removed that, I'm now missing a few millimeters of thickness back here. So I basically need this part, but slightly thicker, and I could have probably just used some washers to fix this, but decided to make a new spacer block with the correct thickness, and believe it or not, I didn't print this one out of plastic. Then it was also time to print the lid, the grid on the inside is to provide some extra stiffness. It's probably not necessary, but I figured it wouldn't hurt. To attach these together, I'm going to press a bunch of magnets into those holes that were printed slightly undersized. And once again, this is the perfect job for one of my favorite tools ever, the Knipex wrench pliers. 
And just a reminder, you do need to check the polarity of the magnets for this kind of thing before pressing them in, because these won't come out without destroying the print. Now that the box is prepared, I can also drill some mounting holes into the steel plate I showed you in the CAD model. Luckily there's an empty space behind it, so I can just drill and tap this in place without damaging anything, which is a relief because I really wanted to avoid having to take the entire saw apart. So for the final install I printed another version of the dust box, which is the version you saw before in the model. And besides improving some minor clearance issues, the biggest difference here is the area around the slot that was too bendy in the last version. Uh, it's reinforced here and that made a huge difference in stiffness. So the dust box doesn't get attached directly to the tilting mechanism. There's this piece of flat bar in between which both acts as a spacer to get everything in the right position to clear the blade. But it's also for support, so this piece of aluminum is quite rigid and prevents the dust box from flexing into any of the moving parts. Another thing I haven't shown you yet is what this slot here is for. Behind this is where one of the mounting studs for the original dust box moves up and down, and I include this slot to be able to use that to support the other side of the box. So on the back side this will have a spacer to keep it aligned at the correct distance. And then from the front we have a washer that also has a shoulder built in that's just a little bit taller than the thickness of the dust box and that makes sure the box always stays in the same plane so this way it has some support on both the left and the right side of the spindle. So here you can finally see the real thing in action and hopefully this drives home what made this so tricky to design but by the third version it's finally clearing everything nicely including the blade. That now leaves the gap in front and there's that little deflector bracket I showed you in the model. This also just attaches with two magnets and should now block any dust from coming out the front of the saw. Next I installed the blade and ran some more tests in every conceivable orientation to make sure it's not hitting anything. And now we just need to add the actual extraction part. So I'm printing those adapters you saw, which luckily fit in my X1 carbon here, which prints easily four times as fast. I made two different dust tube attachments, one for a small hose and one for a big one. But the big one had some clearance issues due to this plate down here, so I'm just using the small one for now. Next I did the first few suction tests. First I just took up the shop vac and just poured some sawdust into the gap here to see if it's even doing anything. And while this looks promising, upon trying the first cuts I was a little disappointed to find out that even with all these improvements, the gap on the side is apparently still big enough for quite a few particles to escape down the side. It's much less than before, but still something I want to try and fix. The good news is I was able to confirm that the dust box works well on principle because if we tilt the blade this effectively closes the gaps on top and in that configuration almost nothing makes it past so that tells me the goal is in reach. My solution to close the remaining gap on the side was to make this thing which is a custom zero clearance insert that once again attaches with magnets and it has an integrated wall which can slide between the blade and the dust box cover. This solution did improve things somewhat, but I did not expect that the tiny gap that's still left in front there would actually allow this much dust to still come out. It really seems like this stuff desperately wants to go absolutely everywhere except where you want it. So it seems like the entire front edge of the blade needs to be completely enclosed and stubborn as I am I kept working on it and after trying two more inserts this was the one that ended up working. It's the same principle except here the wall extends all the way around the front of the blade on both sides so there should be nowhere for the dust to go except into the box now. And I know what you're gonna say about these inserts. I must be an idiot because now the tilting mechanism doesn't work anymore, right? And yes, the walls do of course interfere with the tilting, but it's kind of irrelevant because if you use a zero clearance insert, which I always do for regular cuts because they have a ton of benefits, you need to switch the insert anyway when you want to do miter cuts because you need an insert with a wide slot for those. So since I'm going to end up switching inserts either way, it makes no difference that this has the added walls because it wouldn't work with a miter cut even if it didn't. The important takeaway here is that this solution finally ended up working perfectly. There's so little dust getting past the box now that you can barely even tell I'm making a cut here. So that's a huge improvement over the standard insert and an even bigger one over the original dust box. So with that, I would cautiously call the problems inside the saw solved. 
Now on top of the solves, a whole different story and no amount of suction from the bottom is gonna solve these huge clouds of dust being produced here. So I definitely need some kind of dust hood. As I mentioned in the beginning, this saw does actually come with a dust hood and I can confidently say that it's 100% useless. I tried it a bunch of times and it's incredibly cheaply made and so badly designed that it doesn't do anything except block your view of the saw blade. So of course I went back into fusion and designed my own dust hood. I'm not gonna go over the entire design process for this one, partly because this video is already way longer than I thought it would be, but also because there's many good videos about this topic on YouTube and I'll link some of those in the description. But just to briefly summarize, the idea with this is to direct the airflow from where the hose attaches to the front of the blade. That's why it has that scoop shape in front, but like I said, some people have done extensive testing on these things, and this is just my take on the concept based on what I've learned. I wanted to keep this simple, so it's just a 3D printed center part that has the dust port built into it and that gets sandwiched between two pieces of polycarbonate and this thing is actually super easy to build. Once the center part is printed, all you're gonna do is cut the side panels and then the shape can just be transferred onto those and polycarbonate is super easy to work with because it doesn't chip like other transparent plastics. So I just cut the rough shape on the bandsaw and then refined that on the grinder. Here I'm inserting the nuts into the nut traps, which are slightly undersized, so I'm just pulling those in from the other side using a screw. Now this can all be screwed together and the only thing missing is the round bit in front. The reason I printed this as a separate part is that I was originally considering making this from polycarbonate as well, because you can actually bend that stuff, but eventually I found it to be too much of a hassle when I realized I almost never look at the blade straight from the front. I usually try to stay out of that trajectory, so it really doesn't add much to make this transparent, which is why I went with the printed part. Now I can attach this to the riving knife, and it also gets its own little adapter for the hose, but before I can test this, I need to finalize the install on the bottom too. I printed yet another dust true adapter, which supports the bigger hose. Then I printed this collar, which goes in the dust board hole to protect the hose. Then another problem popped up, which was the ridges of the hose getting caught on this edge here. So I printed yet another part that sticks on there and provides a smooth surface for the hose to slide over. And last but not least, I also decided to not only ditch the dust cyclone you saw in the beginning, but also the sharp vac attached to it. I replaced the sharp vac with a bigger one that has more power and I figured since I don't use this saw extensively, I don't really need the dust cyclone. They're pretty bulky and they do reduce airflow somewhat, so I'd rather change bags every now and then in exchange for a better suction and an even simpler setup. Finally, the last 3D print for today is this adapter that goes in the new sharp vac and then splits up into a connection for the big and the small hose. And now it's finally time for summer testing. Like before, I was a little bit underwhelmed with the result at first, but that quickly changed once I looked at the video footage. So here's the same cut without the dust hood and then with the dust hood installed, and at first glance it might seem like there's not much of a difference there. In the slow motion you can see quite a bit of stuff is getting sucked in, but also quite a bit escaping, but the important part here is the size of the particles we're talking about. As I showed you before, without any dust collection on top, the amount of dust being produced is pretty insane and that goes especially for the fine dust, which is this cloud that almost looks like smoke in these shots. These tiny pulverized particles are what gets into your lungs and gives you cancer and it's also the stuff that floats around the air and covers every surface in the shop eventually. So here's another two identical cuts from a different perspective. One is without the dust hood and one is with the dust hood. If we put these side by side, you can really see the difference and there's a few things to be observed here, which is why I'm playing these over and over. The most apparent one is how the cloud of fine dust is completely missing on the right side, so you still have some larger particles shooting out because they're too heavy and have too much velocity to be captured, but the really fine, annoying, toxic stuff is almost completely caught by the extraction. Another thing I think is interesting is the time frame in which there's stuff shooting out. These shots are synchronized, so you can see on the left that pretty much throughout the entire cut we're getting a constant stream of chips and dust, 
while with the dust to it on it's only on that very last little bit of the cut that some chips are escaping. On the left you can even see a whole additional burst of dust as the workpiece passes the rear end of the blade which also gets completely captured on the right. So overall if I had to guess I'd say this is easily capturing 70% of the stuff that's coming out on the left while also removing almost all of the fine dust. Another way for me to confirm this is the sink area behind the saw which used to be absolutely covered in fine dust after just a few cuts before and now it stays completely clean. Something else to note here is that the type of material also plays a big role. I was mostly cutting OSB in these examples and that stuff is literally made out of wood chips so it really likes to break apart into big chunks but if I try this with stuff like plywood the result is even better and sometimes there's barely anything escaping. So overall I definitely call this a success. It's unreasonable to expect any dust collection to catch anywhere close to 100% but in terms of the before and after the reduction in general mess being produced is pretty significant. I also added a quick release knob to the dust hood so removing this and changing the insert can easily be done in just a few seconds. You can also use the dust hood for miter cuts to some extent. It's not quite as effective of course and an overarm dust hood would be better for this but it's extremely rare for me to cut miters so that wasn't really a priority. Last but not least I did put up a little package on Etsy that includes the 3D model for the dust hood and also a drawing for the side panel in case you want to print this yourself since it should fit on most saws with up to 250mm blades. So you can find that in the description. I didn't put up the files for the dust box because I figured it's very specific to this saw but if you have the same model and want those files just send me a message. So that concludes this video. As always thanks for watching and see you next time.